This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Big data can be defined as here extremely large collections of data or data sets that may be analysed to reveal patterns, trends, associations, especially relating to human behaviour interactions. Now, what are the, the characteristics of big data? Uh, and really, what does all that mean? Uh, and the easiest example of big data is data which is typically collected by supermarkets uh, on your loyalty card. So when you swipe your loyalty card to get a few points that you can exchange for goods at the end of the year, really what's happening is, of course, they are uh, uh, recording in a, in a data warehouse, if you like, uh, your consumption habits, your buying habits. And then they go through this the process called data mining, uh, to try to find associations, patterns, uh, uh, clusters of consumption and the like. So it's become a really very big business. Now, what are the uh, uh, characteristics of big data? And really, I think you have to know the, this idea of the three Vs here. Variety, velocity and volume. Uh, the variety refers to a huge range of different sorts of data. Uh, coming from different sources. Some of it will be numerical data, some of it will be essentially uh, words and descriptions, some of it may be uh, graphical data, uh, some of it may be geographical information about maybe where you've travelled. So a huge variety of data uh, that has to be held, stored and then used in some way to produce useful information. There's also the volume of information. Huge, huge amounts of information are now stored, uh, requiring very, very large computer storage facilities. Uh, and the data is updated and changes very, very rapidly, very high velocity uh, on it. If you think of uh, a large supermarket chain, uh, all the people who are maybe uh, shopping there on a Saturday morning or whenever the, the, the peak shopping time is, uh, in a big supermarket, you have 20 checkouts there. Uh, there's maybe a couple of hundred supermarkets in the country. There's a fantastic amount of data which is being accumulated on a kind of continuous basis. There's a kind of a fourth uh, V which sometimes people talk about uh, in here. Uh, that we have to uh, be aware of veracity, uh, really meaning is it accurate, Can, is it truthful, is it up to date, can we believe it, uh, is another uh, certainly worry about big data. So let's think about the typical volumes and where the volumes come from uh, here. As I've already said, we have uh, uh, loyalty cards being swiped at checkouts, but also retailers get a fantastic amount of information from your visits to their website. They know what uh, pages you've visited, they know what products you've maybe expressed an interest in, maybe you've put them in your basket and take them out of your basket again. Uh, they can begin to maybe analyse from that uh, why you only went so far in the transaction uh, and, and of course they're just encouraging you to complete the transaction. Social media such as uh, Facebook and Twitter again a fantastic volume of information uh, uh, there. They know your contacts, so they know they can look at maybe the photographs you've posted, they can then tag those photographs uh, with, and identify uh, who's faces appear there and, and the like. Uh, they can maybe uh, analyse what you've said, the comments you've made. They can look at the where well, you've uh, said you like something uh, and an amazing amount of feedback can be obtained from uh, both Facebook and Twitter and indeed other social media outlets. Mobile phone companies. Mobile phone companies obviously know who you ring. Uh, they know how long you spend uh, ringing these people. They know obviously that gets into some sort of pattern like you, you know, always ring home on a Friday evening or whatever it's going to be. Uh, they know where you are when you make the phone call because even if you're not in fact using your phone at a time, the phone is always sending out a signal kind of saying I'm here, I'm here, I'm here so that an incoming call can find you. And it's easy for phone companies to uh, triangulate. There's a number of different uh, transmitter masts around the vicinity and they can find out really to within a few meters exactly where you are. 
They can also look if you use your mobile phone for browsing, obviously, which pages you have visited. They could, if they wanted to, uh, look at your texts and maybe listen to your voicemails. Internet the providers and indeed browser providers, uh, again, they will have records of every site you visit, every page that you look at and so on. They know what downloads you've uh, made. Uh, they know all about to whom you're sending your emails. They will, if they want to, be able to read your emails if they're not encrypted uh, and, 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 and so on. You enter in search terms into Google or even just a top address bar of a web browser. And again, this can, this can all be kind of filed away uh, for later analysis. And finally, as an example of volume, just look at the banking system. If you look at the your credit card statement, it knows all the purchases you've made that, that month and maybe for the last five or ten years back. It knows this sort of, it doesn't necessarily know exactly what you've bought, but it knows the retailers you frequent. Uh, and from that, it can get a very considerable insight into what your interests and habits are. Ah, it knows, for example, if you uh, often go to the cinema or maybe if you often go to a particular restaurant and, and, and the like. And this can be of very useful information to uh, cinema companies, restaurant companies, fast food companies, and so on. Variety. Well, we've inevitably kind of covered a little bit of variety. We're looking at the volume of data uh, here. But let's just uh, look at some of the, the less maybe obvious ones uh, uh, here. Obviously, we know browsing, financial transactions, your interests because of the pages you look at, your buying habits and so on. Uh, but let's, let's look here at geographical uh, information. So a company will know, uh, a web browsing company will know where you are uh, when you access their site because this is all uh, information which is relayed to the site. Uh, I said already that when you have your mobile phone on, uh, they know exactly where you're moving about there. And you could imagine uh, a supermarket company it begins to get tracking information about your where your phone is when you enter the supermarket. It knows where you're moving around the aisles of the supermarket. It knows maybe where you've paused. It will know whether where you've paused then correlates to something you've bought. Whether you paused, maybe looked at something, but for some reason didn't put that in, in your basket. Uh, supermarkets, of course, have often got closed circuit television cameras in the roof mainly for, or originally, to stop shoplifting. But now, of course, facial recognition is getting quite uh, powerful. Uh, and they can file away your facial characteristics. They would recognize you again when you came into the, the store. They are, are able to tie up maybe where you, you are because of your mobile phone data with your face and so on. Uh, and when you come into the store again, it won't be very long maybe before you get a, you know, a special offer uh, kind of flashed up as you go past the stand and maybe a, a text message uh, saying, you know, last time you were here, you kind of looked at this product, it's now 20% off and, 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 and so on. So great potential marketing opportunities, although, of course, as we'll see at the end, some people uh, don't like this kind of, uh, what they would regard as kind of spying or record keeping on their activities, even if the activities are completely innocent. There's also a geographic information such as uh, photographs, uh, looking at uh, aerial photographs from satellites and aeroplanes and so on. Uh, you can uh, discover maybe where there is land available for building. Uh, you can discover uh, through the, the, the undulations of the land maybe which areas are subject to, to flood. Uh, you can ascertain quite a lot about the geology which is under the land. Uh, and what sort of crops might be uh, profitably grown on the land and, and, and so on. And the last one I'll give an example of is in uh, jet engine uh, maintenance. Rolls-Royce jet engines, for example, now instead of just selling uh, uh, an airline, the, the plane and the jet engine, if you like, as a once-off, what Rolls-Royce likes to do is to essentially uh, sell you the engine plus a kind of maintenance contract. Uh, and what the engine is doing all the time it's flying, it is transmitting data back uh, to the Rolls-Royce 
kind of headquarters in Derby in England. So lots of sensors on the engine about uh, vibration and temperature and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, and it allows Rolls-Royce really to uh, uh, predict where maybe something is going wrong. Uh, if the vibration begins to increase a little bit, it's not at any danger level or anything of that sort, but just it's going a little bit and increase, then maybe they say we need to perform a bit of preventive maintenance on this engine. This is obviously safer for passengers, uh, but it also prevents uh, a lot of disruption for the airline, uh, because if you do preventative maintenance on a timely basis, uh, there is less chance of uh, you know them trying to start up the engines, find there's a technical fault, uh, and you all have to, to change to another aeroplane. Uh, we've got variety, we have volume. I don't think I need to say about velocity again. The, this information is just tumbling in continuously to uh, the large, essentially, data warehouses where the big data is kept. Then what takes place with this huge volume of data uh, is known as data analytics, basically analyzing uh, the data. Uh, various types uh, of data analytics, data mining, uh, looking at data, look at uh, patterns, establish relationships and associations where people maybe buy particular products together, uh, where certain products are particularly um, popular, maybe, maybe it correlates to weather, maybe it correlates to something which is on television, uh, and so on. This can help the supermarket maybe to predict when big demands are and to ensure that they're not going to run out of stock or maybe they put a special offer on to, to encourage more sales of it. Predictive analytics, trying to predict consumer behavior. A uh, common example here is data which is collected by airlines. They will know what sort of seat you prefer, whether it's window or aisle, or whether you're one of the really minority people who likes the, the centre uh, seats. Uh, and maybe what they can begin to do is to offer you, maybe at a cost, but say, you know, aisle seats, you know, can be booked in, in advance or they come with a particular cost. Uh, maybe they know that you're susceptible to an upgrade from economy to premium economy. You've done that before. Now when you book a, an economy seat, they can, you know, entice you maybe to uh, spend a little on upgrading to more legroom and uh, more comfort and, and so on. They'll also be able to predict maybe whether you're likely to want to have hold baggage, checked in baggage, whether you're likely to want travel insurance to hire a car. Uh, based on previous patterns of behavior, they're trying to predict future ones. Text analytics, uh, scanning text such as emails and maybe word processing uh, attached documents. Uh, I think uh, some of the large uh, uh, search engine companies do this, some of the large internet companies do this when they uh, send, uh, when you send an email. Uh, and then you mention, you know, a particular product on it, uh, then this data can be sold to consumers. Perhaps there's an, a, an element of a, making it anonymous when it's sold on, uh, but uh, it, it's something which will be valuable for the producers to know. Voice analytics, uh, where you listen to what people are saying. Uh, I'm sure you have now phoned up organizations and rather than saying you know, press 1 for this, press 2 for that, press 3 for that, they will ask you what's your name, you know, what's your date of birth, what's your account number, and you're speaking normally, uh, but the machine understands what you're saying. And then statistical analysis, looking at trends, correlations, changes in behavior. Uh, for example, uh, the, the Google has proved to be quite good at identifying where there is an outbreak of disease happening before the authorities are really aware of it. So if let's say there's a flu epidemic breaking out, so it's in a particular town is kind of where it's starting, people feel as though they've got influenza, they've got a the headache, they've got the temperature, they're shivering. Uh, what many of us do, we go off to Google and we put in influenza or influenza cures or something of that sort. Uh, and, and obviously if a, a significant number of people begin doing that in a town, the chances are there may well be an influenza outbreak, and they probably do that before they go and see their doctor. 
So well before the health authorities are aware that there's a, a problem or an epidemic, uh, Google and other search engine companies uh, can pick this up really quite accurately. Big data dangers. Well, uh, maintaining the data, collecting the data, maintaining the data, analyzing the data requires huge processing power uh, and there's a considerable cost associated with that. There's regulation. Uh, many countries have got uh, regulations uh, affecting the maintenance and the holding uh, of personal data. Uh, and there are rules and regulations and indeed laws about what data you can keep, how long you can keep it for, what might happen if you keep the incorrect data, data which is, doesn't have veracity, uh, basically. Are you allowed to collect that data, let's say in Europe, and transmit it to a, a server or a company which is in America outside maybe European Union legislation and so on. So we have to be careful to, you know, companies have to be careful to keep on the right side of the law. Uh, apart from there being penalties that maybe have to be paid, uh, there are considerable uh, PR risks there uh, if uh, companies are found to be exploiting personal data without people's knowledge. Uh, there's a loss and theft of data. We've had uh, a lot of uh, examples of uh, hacking, basically, where hackers break into the data warehouses and they download all sorts of data, people's names, addresses, bank accounts, credit cards, consumer information, passwords, all sorts of stuff causing a potential lot of damage. Veracity, uh, we have to be careful that the information is correct and up to date uh, because bad things can happen. Uh, so if uh, they miscoded, let's say they thought that you hadn't paid off your credit card or hadn't paid your rent, uh, they got your name confused with somebody else's name, uh, you end up with a bad credit record and then you try and borrow money and you refuse and so on. There can be real damage uh, caused to people uh, and the company may, may, may well have to compensate that person for the damages caused, caused. And the final area where people worry about is employee monitoring. Uh, uh, for a long time now, you know, when people are in supermarkets and you're scanning stuff out, they know exactly how quickly each person at the checkout is working. Uh, in a call center, they know exactly how long on average you spend on a call. Uh, because you have to hit a, a nice medium, you don't want to be rude to the person, uh, but nevertheless you don't want to be kind of spending 15 minutes chatting to them about the weather and so on, uh, if other people are, are waiting. Uh, increasingly, uh, people wear name tags or, you know, a little badge around their neck. Uh, these uh, uh, increasingly have ways of identifying that person and uh, maybe transmitting that person's whereabouts to be recorded. So they know exactly what departments you've visited. Uh, they maybe know who, who you've talked to. Uh, they can maybe listen to the conversations. Uh, they can look at emails which you've sent using the company facilities and, and so on. So there's very, very close monitoring of what employees are doing, where they are in the business, who they've talked to, and maybe what they've said. And of course, there's, there's a natural worry uh, that this is maybe impinging on uh, people's rights to privacy, uh, whether or not you're an employee.